Hello and uh, welcome to this new short tutorial series about the GDS visualization software. Today I'm going to show how to do a uspex variable composition calculation with the GDS using the GURB software for the SIC variable system. First of all, I'm going to do a little magic to remove the Windows decoration. You don't need to do that. And now launching GDS with a plain look. And we are going to create a new model. And from that empty model, we can launch a specs calculation. No, we want a variable composition job and I'm going to set uh, silicone as the first atom and apply and uh, add an atom type which is going to be common. We can see that we have both types. Let's set the num species block, one with the carbon, the other one with the silicone. Composition will be a combination of both blocks. Let's not forget to optimize based on the minimum enthalpy. Let's also choose a convenient name for our job. In the next tab, the population figure are chosen. The population size the initial population size and the stop criterion. Since this is a variable composition, the maximum and minimum numbers of atoms have to be set. The calculation tab is the most important one. We are going to define the specific folder using three steps. Using the auto step setting, GDS will fill all the GURB parameters. We need to open the folders that contain the libraries provided by GURB where the interatomic potentials are defined. We are going to select a terce of potential for silicon carbide. We also need to fill the GURB command. Here I remind you about the timeout command which will kill a style job in this case after 60 seconds. I use the serial girl command, but the MPI one can be used. After we apply the step settings, we need to repeat the same process for each step. We can of course change the potential. or switch to vast steps, but let's remain simple. Now let's check that uh, each step has identical parameters, and we are all set. Just check once more your spec parameters. Now we can save the parameters and launch the specs. We can see the job running, but let's check on the task manager. You can see the familiar specs output. Your specs is now generating structures. and calculations are started. Let's see the output graphs. The whole graph gives the whole structure energies. The composition graph gives energy function of the composition. Graphs are filled as the calculation goes.
the first generation is over. As a new generation is started, the structures in green become black, as green indicates the current generation. Let's have a look at all the graphs. You can see the gen second generation being filled as the best results are available for the first. OK, let's skip to the end of the USPEC calculation. Now we can see that the USPEC calculation is over. The composition diagram now looks quite different with three structures in the convex hull. Now it's a good point to remind you that this is just an example calculation. Let's have a look at the whole graph. As you can see, it has become more complex with 100 generations. The red trails are the best structures for each generation, which are gathered in the best graph. Now, if you want an idea of the structures on the convex hull, you can use the best graph to accurately point at them. The bottom one corresponding to carbon, which structure is shown here, and you may recognize it. The middle energy one, which corresponds to SIC, which structure can be seen here. Surprise. And finally, the last one corresponding to silicon, which is shown here. That's all for the USPEX part, but wait, there is more. Now that we have structure on convex hull, we can use them as a starting point for vast calculations. For example, for that SIC structure, we might want to optimize it a little more using VASP. Let's use lazy presetting. We want to optimize the geometry, and I'm going to pretend that I don't know the electronics. Let's use medium K grid. I'm going to use four CPUs divided in two groups of two. Voila. Let me check the convergence parameters. The electronic parameters. Actually, I want to change that a bit. Let's plot the dose so we can figure out the electronic states. I'm going to try 500 points between minus 10 and plus 10 EV. For the ionic relaxation, I choose a conjugate gradient optimization with a lot of steps. I also want to optimize every geometric parameters. I won't change the cap points grid. I'm going to use the folder podcar method. Just open the folder where you unpack the podcars. Voila. You can now select different podcar flavor. Now for the final settings. I'm going to save this calculation in another folder which I will create. Let me review the settings. Now we can save and launch the valve calculation. Let's see. Yes, it started. The first step is over, so let's skip to the end of the vast calculation. That was fast. As you can see, the calculation is completed. This is the optimized geometry. We can check the graphs for the optimized values. The electronic structure is not yet available. As you can see, all values seem converged. Let's stop tracking and reload the model 
so we can see the electronic structure. The electronic is now available. Let's see the bound and dose diagram and the dose only diagram, which I fair. Now we can see hopefully that silicon carbide is a semiconductor. That will conclude this micro tutorial. I hope that you have enjoyed it and I thank you for your attention.